For the first time, we are hearing from the woman Angelina has been relying on. Her story is told in the film, First They Killed My Father. Why was it so important for you to tell this story? Did I feel I had the right to be the one doing that? I felt very ignorant because I knew nothing about the war. People across the world know about this. It's a story right out of a Hollywood thriller. She's such an extraordinary person that has survived so much. But the movie doesn't show her full story. How did your family survive? It was a brutal regime. 1.7 million Cambodians died. I remember just being on the street with my sisters, playing hopscotch. The most vulnerable person on this earth, a young girl at war. And there were men in black shirts and pants, grenades on their belts and guns on their back. I will never forget the day the soldiers came for my father. That is a day that changed your life. We didn't know what was going on. People were starting to disappear in the middle of the night. I didn't understand. I was seven years old. I didn't have anybody to protect me. Eventually ended up in a camp. I was encouraged to hate. The more aggressive I became, the more food I was given. If I could fix it, I would have hugged my mother before I left her. How did you survive when you were barely eight years old? A couple months after the soldiers had taken my father away, my mother gathered all my siblings around. Um, there were four of us at this time. With all of us sitting in a circle waiting for her, Mon nervously walks around the hut outside to make sure no one can hear us. When she joins us, her eyes are filled with tears. If we stay together, we will die together. But if they cannot find us, they cannot kill us. You three have to leave and go far away. Walk until you come to a work camp. Tell them you are orphans and they will take you in. Change your name. Don't let people know who you are. I don't want to go. Ma looks at me. You have no choice, she says. Remember, don't come back. She turns me around by the shoulders, pushing me away. After a few steps, I turn around and see that Ma has already gone back into the hut. I thought she didn't love me. I thought she didn't want me. I felt abandoned by her. You know, after my father, there was still a uh, hope that we could get back together and the war would end. It was just, I just knew it would never be the same. And I marched off eventually ended up in a camp, in a child soldier's camp. I would be taken out and be trained with guns and knives. I was encouraged to hate. The more aggressive I became, the more hateful I became, the more food I was given. For the next three years, eight months, and 20 days, all of Cambodia would become a prison and all the people would live in villages that were akin to mass labor camps. It was very, very brutal. I was alone. I didn't have any, anybody to protect me. While picking firewood in the forest one day, someone comes up from behind me and grabs my waist. I swing around ready to attack, but stop. He walks toward me, pulling me close to him in a tight grip. He breathes heavily. In a surge of anger, I slap him across the face and push him away. Leave me alone! Get away from me! I scream into his face. I cannot fight him. I turn to run, but am stopped by his hands on my arms. He throws me hard on the ground. I sit there, paralyzed and speechless. Time slows as he unbuttons his pants and they drop to his ankles. Screaming at the top of my lungs, I kick him in the groin with all of my hatred. He doubles over and falls to the ground. My legs push me up and I run as fast as I can without stopping. I have to see Ma. It is dangerous to travel without permission, but I do not care. I have to go to her. When I got to the village, someone was living in, in my house already. And I asked the woman where my mother was, and she said she didn't know, and that the, the soldiers had came for my mother and for your old sister. I just can't imagine what it must have been like to send up your kids into the war zone you know that you had to do it because the chances of them being with you was more danger than of sending them out into the war zone and that was her way of saving our lives so i ran to the road and i headed for my sister's camp's direction 
and then there was my brothers and sister came in too um, and then we were reunited just somebody just as if somebody was guiding us together at 10 you finally escaped yes. there were two ways out of Cambodia then you either walk the land between Cambodia and Thailand where we knew it was littered with these tiny little weapon system called landmines once in the ground stay active for decades my brother thought it was too dangerous of a route and so he opted for the safer route buy seats on boats and we were able to only raise enough gold to take three people out and so we left arriving at the refugee camps in thailand after six months of staying there we were told we were had been selected to go to this new place called america with this trip, I could remake myself. I could have a better future. I could find safety. I could build a better life. But wars do not end just because you leave it. The war raged on in my mind, even while my body was adjusting and adapting to peace. It got to the point where I was so depressed that I just didn't know how to live. To this day, I do not know what happened to my father. To this day, I do not know what happened to my mother and four-year-old sister. I wanted to know, I wanted to go back to Cambodia someday and make a difference. But to do that, I would have to return to the war field. I would have to go back. And I didn't know I could do that. I was scared and I had to make a choice. Do you live in fear or do you choose to stand up? And I chose to stand. And I did this because I realized how much sacrifice my parents did and how enraged they would be to see now that my siblings and I were having a hard time surviving the peace because of landmines. Years after the soldier had stopped killing parents and making children orphans, the landmines in Cambodia were doing exactly that. And that is why I have devoted my time and my energy to um, help increase awareness on landmines and also to raise funds so that those who've been hurt by landmines are provided with prosthetic limbs so that they could have um, a chance to walk and to work and, and to live. Luang Ang has emerged to become a celebrated author and an internationally renowned human rights activist who now shares her story with captivated audiences around the world. When I feel weak and vulnerable, I remember that I come from a long line of survivors, that I come from a long line of fighters, that I cannot dishonor their love and memories and spirits and courage in such a way as to give up and not take that next breath. And I change how I look at the world. I change how I look at all of us as survivors, us having strength and resiliencies. I change my story from that of being fragmented to one where I could see the wholeness of not just my experience, but my mother's, my father's, where you realize that this is not about you, that we are not alone in our journey to heal because we are here and that is victory. We breathe and that is victory. We have life and that is victory.